Hi there, my name is Michael. I'm your friendly neighborhood humble stroke consultant, and this is, we all know, Crash the Wonderbird, who's yet to be cooked, currently finding a good recipe. Um, <clears throat> and this is now Wordy Wednesday, so this will be the first Wordy Wednesday. Uh, it's also New Year's Day, so Happy New Year to all of those uh, about you out, out there. <clears throat> so Wordy Wednesdays, what are we going to accomplish? Let me just say, first off, I'm not a speech and language therapist. I'm not an occupational therapist. <clears throat> I have a little bit of knowledge and clinical skills due to previous education and employment many years ago. Although experientially, I've got the biggest piece. I have expressive aphasia. I have anomia and I have uh, apraxia of speech or verbal apraxia. So on Wordy Wednesdays, we are going to accomplish some basic strategies on how to deal with anomia, how to deal with apraxia. We'll start out with expressive um, and then we'll go to the other forms. Uh, and we're also going to deal with apraxia. So I'm looking up documents that I'm going to include every time I find a document. I'm going to include it in the links down below so that way you can get a hold of the document. <clears throat> I'm trying to find documents from universities, uh, speech and language pathologists, you know, so they're going to be PDFs or PowerPoints, things that you can download and save to your computer or download and print like a worksheet. So let's just talk about some of the realities of having a communication disorder or deficit after a stroke, brain injury, a concussion, right? For some reason, you have had a, an insult to the brain. And unfortunately, that has robbed you, um, stolen uh, your ability to communicate effectively. We are a social animal. We live in a society that has language, that the language is written, that, you know, we have to do the texting, the emails, we have to do uh, the Skype, uh, we have to do the face-to-face -face conversations. So, so <clears throat> let me just say this. I completely understand, and, and I've been through the sense of frustration, the sense of self-doubt, the sense of um, isolation. Um, I understand uh, and I've experienced some of that post-stroke where, you know, walking into a coffee shop uh, to order a coffee uh, can, you know, be a three and a half minute conversation and that's just me ordering the coffee. Uh, walking into the kitchen uh, to get peanut butter and you go to ask someone, can you get me the the, and it's, it's, the word is figuratively on the tip of your tongue or in the brain trying to get out, um, or uh, you're having difficulty forming the words. Uh, you can attempt to say peanut butter, but it sounds more like stuttering. <clears throat> I appreciate that. And I know how hobbling that is. I know how <clears throat> embarrassing that is. And I know... There's a sense that you want to recoil from having to need to interact with people at times because it can be difficult when you're involved in a conversation. Oh, sorry, buddy. And a portion of the conversation is ending, but you had a thought a minute and a half ago and it's still taking the time to come out. So sometimes your ideas, your verbalizations can seem out of uh, context. So... I know some of the deficits that I experience, and I'm not unique. I know uh, some of the difficulties that I've experienced, and I know I'm not unique. Um, I had a stroke uh, on June 21st, 2018, so it's roughly a little over 18 months. Um, right out the gate, I had uh, apraxia of speech or verbal apraxia, so it sounded like I was stuttering at times. I had anomia, uh, the word finding, word selection, and I had uh, aphasia, right, where I just, I could think of the word, but I couldn't get it out. <clears throat> so, over the next, let's just say, six episodes of Wordy Wednesday, so 12 weeks, essentially. I'm going to touch a little bit on each one, and I'm going to give you some resources on each one, and then, at some point, we're going to start using props other than Crash the Wonder Bird. Because I could say Crash is a, you're going to say bird, I'm going to say a dick, right? 
Um, you know, he is two colors. He is, that part is not running away, but white. And that part is not running away, but gray. You know, come here, buddy. So we're going to do some of that. Um, you know, we're going to do some convergent naming. We're going to do some confrontational naming. Uh, we're going to do various things to try to help help us help ourselves, right? And also help us help our friends, help our family. Because I'm going to be honest, people, they don't get it. And sadly, they never will. Unless you hit them on the head with a very big hammer. Not a good idea. Definitively bad life choice. Brain injury plus prison equals bad time. So, what, buddy? What's going on? Okay. So, we're going to deal with some some simple topics to begin with. Uh, we're going to deal with issues that we all have to play around with. You know, where sometimes you think you feel kind of foolish because you're not being as effective in getting your message out. Uh, or it's it's like you're stumbling over your own words and or you're stuttering a little bit. Uh, or... And the best way I can describe it, for part of it, is it's like you're trying to write a, a paper or, or a document for work <clears throat> or a paper for school. And you're looking for that right word, but it's not a word for emphasis. It's not a case of you can't find the right word, so checking the dictionary or checking a thesaurus uh, is, is going to give you the right option. Your brain has, for lack of a better term, taken the word hostage. Uh, and it's not going to let it go immediately. Uh, sometimes it's a case of you've got this really great thought, but it takes a couple of minutes to finally get from the thinker to the mouth moving piece, you know. So, and sometimes that might now be no longer relevant to the portion of the conversation. So it it almost sounds like you're you're not paying attention, or maybe you're slow. Um, so. There are some unique circumstances that get created because of having aphasia or anomia or apraxia uh, when it comes to the communication side of things after a stroke. Uh, now, I will cover eventually nonverbal uh, or motor aphasia, or sorry, apraxia uh, at some point. And again, keep in mind, I'm not a physiotherapist. I'm not an occupational therapist. I'm not a speech and language pathologist. Um, I'm just a guy who's had a stroke that has a YouTube channel that wants to help other people that have had a brain injury, had a stroke, uh, a concussion, you know, somehow, some way, your ability to effectively and meaningfully interact with your universe, uh, has been, and this is me looking for the right word for emphasis, this is not a moment of anomia has been infringed upon, <clears throat> right? And it can make things difficult. I accept that. But it's that is a difficult thing to accept. Um, just having a stroke can create moments of post-stroke anxiety, post-stroke depression. But also now when you need to go and interact with the world, uh, that can create moments of anxiety. Uh, if you're not able to... For example, buy groceries, uh, or you're worried about the conversation that's going to come up in the supermarket because you're looking for a can of tomatoes, right? Because you're making something that needs tomatoes. But all of a sudden, you don't know what aisle it's in, and you go to ask someone that works at the store, uh, you know, I need a can of, well, what if your brain has robbed you of the word tomatoes. You know, uh, what if your brain is having difficulty just completing the thought and getting it out to the world? Uh, what if, you know, and this has happened to me, you start to have the apraxia show up and it sounds like you're stuttering. Well, I was talking fine two minutes ago and now I'm so sounding like Elmer Fudd, right? Uh, or Porky Pig which is never a good thing. 
So, because now you start to become very more, very more, that's really good English. Uh, you start to become uh, significantly more self-conscious. So, if your communication deficits and your difficulties because of the situation that helped you get apraxia, anomia, um, aphasia, have started to create, I'm just going to be honest, mental health issues, right? You now have anxiety, uh, be it social anxiety or any other general anxiety disorder. You now have some form of depression uh, because of that, um, you know, or maybe um, you have PTSD right now. Now, you, you might hear some clicking sounds. That is him actually making a happy beak sound. So he will nibble on the end of this, and then he's happy, and he makes like a grinding noise. So, that being said, yeah, so my PTSD has nothing to do with my apraxia, per se. However, if I'm in a moment where I'm highly anxious, the apraxia, like if I'm having an anxiety attack, so to speak, uh, or a moment of panic, um, yeah, the apraxia can show up, the anomia can show up, the, uh, the aphasia can show up. So they can be triggered, at least in my experience, by being um, highly, highly emotional, overstimulated, and not in a good way, um, being overtired, you know, things that could be an emotional drain. <clears throat> so if, if I become uh, overstimulated by uh, the sensory portion of the world. So if I go to a store and I haven't taken the appropriate precautions, such as uh, sunglasses and earbuds, uh, at that point I, I could be in significant trouble, hello again, uh, to end up having some communication deficits during that interaction. So if there's something specific you want to see me cover on upcoming Wordy Wednesdays, please leave a comment down below, right? Uh, if or you can reach me on the Twitter, uh, you, you can find me on Instagram, or you can email me at strokeassalter at gmail.com. I say, I say again, strokeassalter at gmail.com. And we're going to cover over the next, say, 12 weeks, six episodes, little 15-minute vignettes of how to deal with um, and improve your skills with communicating. Just being able to get your message out so you can walk into the kitchen with some confidence and ask for the peanut butter. So you can go into a restaurant with some confidence and ask for a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. You know, um, you can walk into a clothing store and, and get socks you know, or whatever the case may be. So this way, when you go to interact with your universe, you have some more, you have some more skills you have some more confidence, you're less likely to be a little bit anxious, right? And just have a better day. That's really all I intend to get out of this. Leave that alone. So on that note, leave some comments down below on what you'd like to see me cover on the Wordy Wednesdays. I'm going to leave some links uh, of some of the documents I've already found so you can get a head start. And then if there ever becomes a case of you will need props, um, I will tell you at the beginning of the video um, what props you will need. Uh, and these will be things you will have in your home, right? Like jars of peanut butter. Uh, they will be, um, medication. They will be, um, you know, if you have a pet, right? uh, they might be, um, shoes, you know, uh, they might be anything, right? So at that point, if you like what you've been seeing, please like, share, subscribe. If you know someone that has a communication deficit, be that a monomia, apraxia, uh, be that um, uh, aphasia, please point the, these videos specifically out to them. They might get some benefit out of the videos I generate, the content it contains, and then the links for the research down below. If you happen to know someone that's going through the, the recovery of a stroke or supporting someone going through the recovery of a stroke or a brain injury, or, or um, a concussion, please, again, point the channel out to them. They may definitely get some uh, value out of the content I generate. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who appears to, me, appears to be immediately befuddled, 
confused, has lost your sense of balance. Someone's having eye problems. They can't see out of one eye. They only see in grayscale. They only see a little dot in the world. They can't move their eyes in a certain direction. Someone who has a noticeable visual slackening of the facial muscles. One side of the face has immediately gone limp or drooping. Right? Someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't uh, or has difficulty um, with slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate phrases for situation or context. Someone has general body weakness or weakness on one side or has an inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place them in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.